Bit of a different video today. We're doing the carbon sugar snake science demonstration. You might also see this demonstration as the carbon fire snake or fire worm or any other variation of those things. It's a pretty straightforward demonstration that you can do with a few basic materials and open space and a responsible adult. That could be you. And we are dealing with fire and I will not be responsible for you burning yourself or anything else. Whenever we do anything with fire, we need to take appropriate precautions. So let's get to the setup. To see today's chemical reactions, we need some heat. To do that, we'll use a metal oven tray with aluminium foil on top. Dry sand, it won't work if the sand is wet, and the sand needs to be in a bit of a mound with a well at the top. We'll use lighter fluid to soak the sand. Sand by itself won't catch fire. We need fuel for that, which the lighter fluid will provide. And we're going to put a mix of four teaspoons of icing sugar and one teaspoon of bicarb soda in the well. Using a barbecue lighter or a long match, we'll light the mound and stand back and wait for it to happen. Okay, here we go. Wait, that's a plate, not a metal oven tray. I guess we'll see how it goes. Let's light it and see. That's a lot of fire. I'm going to fast forward now because we don't need to watch it in real time. Look at the mixture in the middle. Look, I shouldn't have used a plate. The sudden application of heat has caused it to heat unevenly, causing it to come under stress and crack. Oh well. Huh, is that it? I was expecting a snake like this one from St. Louis Science Center, the video's thumbnail. Mine doesn't quite look like that. I'll try again, maybe with less sugar mixture and an oven tray so I don't break any more plates. Well, that didn't work either. I'll try again and add more bicarb. Hmm, that's not it. Again with more mixture. That's better. I'm out of lighter fluid now. I'll give it one more go with this starter gel kind of thing. It should burn a little more slowly, which might do better. That's enough. And well, it did something every time, but no like snakes. It's a bit disappointing. And this is the thing. I was going to make a quick video just demonstrating a cool little science activity, but it was underwhelming. And I think that it's telling of something. I'm disappointed. Are you also disappointed? I'm a primary teacher and part of my job is teaching science. Sometimes a demonstration will yield less than impressive results. The science is still happening, but there isn't the spectacle. This is an example. There are a few chemical changes happening. When the sugar burns in the presence of oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide gas and water, water vapor that is. Some of the sugar doesn't have access to oxygen, so it undergoes thermal decomposition and just turns into carbon and water vapor. The bicarb soda or sodium bicarbonate turns into carbon dioxide, water vapor, and sodium carbonate. The carbon and sodium carbonate can be seen as the black stuff that the snake is being made of. The gases released you can't see, but you can see the effects they have. They are pushing the solids upwards, which should give a snake effect, but just kind of gave us a mound each time. The black substance is actually very light and not at all dense. It's mostly air. Interesting. But eh, it's still disappointing. 
I think sometimes when we hear science, we almost think magic trick. I'm going to make something change or explode. And that is an element of science. It can be a spectacle, it can be fun. Other times, well, it's less fun. In an article for Smithsonian Science Education Centre, Margie Schmiel, who is an expert in research and science education, which is what she earned her PhD in, wrote about her experience getting into science, and how there are times where there are explosions and things change colour. It's exciting, it's fun. And then there are times, plenty of times, where things are far less exciting, they're boring, they're hard, but all the little bits of knowledge we learn and all of the hard things that scientists do go towards our collective understanding of the world. She wrote, I learned something about what it means to do science. Science is cumulative and I can't go on a brain vacation whenever something seems boring or hard. Just because the science isn't exciting or fun doesn't mean it isn't important or helpful. For us here, we didn't see a snake effect, but we did still see the chemical reactions happen. And we can still see that some things decompose with heat, some things combust, they leave things behind. We can see some of them and others that we can't see. And it's all very cool. And sometimes things aren't what we expected or aren't fun. And that's also okay. Lots of things that are worth doing have unfun components. Running a race is exciting, but the months of training leading up to it are often gruelling and boring. Performing in a concert or a play or a musical is exciting, but the many, many hours that go into rehearsing, practicing, honing your craft is often hard work and can be boring. Science is exciting and it allows us to do exciting and incredible things. But what most people see is just the tip of the iceberg. And that iceberg is built by innumerable scientists throughout history and even more uncountable hours researching, experimenting, asking questions, working things out. Oftentimes, these aren't fun and can be boring. And I think there's something to that. Often things that are worth doing have tedious, unfun aspects. but we can't just go on brain vacations when it gets hard and boring. For me, I view science not as a show to entertain us, but as a way we understand the world around us. So whatever we do, ask questions, get curious, and don't give up when the answers get tricky, because often persevering through the hard and boring stuff is when we'll eventually find the good stuff. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me, even though the demonstration was a little underwhelming. On this channel, I like to explore things that inspire in me a sense of curiosity and wonder, and hopefully can share with you in a non-boring way. I invite you to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool for more videos like this. And thanks again for watching. Take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.